a wide variety of Germans come to Cincinnati. One of the things that they have in common is that they have this attachment to beer culture that they bring over with them from Germany. The 1840s is when lagering was becoming the predominant means of brewing and manufacturing beer, and so lager beer becomes the major type of beer that's brewed in over the Rhine, which was the neighborhood that saw the largest percentage of German immigrants. And so over the Rhine in the 1840s, 1850s takes on a high German flavor. There are dozens of saloons and beer gardens and eventually by the 1860s, 1870s there are about two dozen major breweries. By the 1890s the brewing industry peaks in Cincinnati. About 90 percent of the beer which is consumed in Cincinnati was manufactured right here. So this is the way that the brewing industry largely functioned everywhere. It was mostly for local and regional consumption. Cincinnati consumed an awful lot of beer, much higher than the national average, in part because of the high percentage of folks with German ancestry. From then, the story of beer in Cincinnati tails off. Alcohol consumption per capita declines significantly as we approach the turn of the century. There are new blue laws that go into effect, which lead to 1919 and the beginning of prohibition, which lasts for a little bit more than a decade. During prohibition in the 1920s, it's not that difficult for people who really want to have a drink to get alcohol. But it is difficult for breweries to brew beer, so they try and do other things. Make soft drinks, that's where the term soft drink comes from. Do other kinds of bottling to just try and survive as a corporation until prohibition ends, which doesn't happen until 1933. By then, many of the large breweries in Cincinnati have closed, but there are still about a dozen left. From then on, the major pressure in Cincinnati on breweries has to do with the national competition particularly in the 1960s and 1970s, as certain brands build capacity, particularly Budweiser and Miller, attach themselves to professional athletics and are able to make inroads, not just in Cincinnati, but lots of cities that used to have their own beer brewing traditions like Pittsburgh, and essentially erode brand loyalty at the local level. By the 1990s, only about 10% of the beer consumed in Cincinnati was produced in Cincinnati, and eventually all of it is produced by one company, Hudipole Shaneling. It wasn't until pretty recently that Greg Hardman bought all of that and has revived brewing under these labels. Almost all of it has happened outside of Cincinnati, ironically. He bought the brands and all of the recipes. And now he's moving it back to Cincinnati. He bought the former Hussman's factory down and over the Rhine and has already begun brewing beer there. And of course you've heard about the Lager House, which he's building as part of the bank's development, where he'll also brew beer. He's using real past to create a fictional past, which makes Cincinnatians feel connected and make it feel very real. I think that's a very good thing to do.